I'm Russ Abbott. I am the founder of Tattoo Smart. Today, I am going to demonstrate the Cheyenne cartridge needle brushes. I worked hand in hand with the folks at Cheyenne to produce a set of brushes for the iPad that precisely mimic the exact sizes of the Cheyenne needle cartridges as well as the behaviors that they have while tattooing. So in the set, you're gonna see all the way from the smallest single one-liner all the way up to uh, the largest Magnum they have, which is the uh, 27 Magnum. We worked directly from precise technical drawings that they use in their manufacturing process and created a digital version of a tattoo needle, dialing in the settings so that the brushes behave the way that you would expect they would in a tattoo. And we've come up with something that I'm really excited about. I think that the possibility and the potential for this type of tool help to create a relationship between what you normally do when tattooing and what you're going to do while preparing your design. For example, you could outline your line drawing with the exact same liners that you would plan to use in the tattoo. And as long as you start with a 300 DPI image in Procreate here, the needles are going to be the same size as they would in a real tattoo. So we're going to go through the process. I'm going to use a piece of flash from uh, another Tattoo Smart set, the Angry Animal set by Aaron Francione. Just to kind of relate it even more to tattooing, I'm going to go ahead and make it purple just like the, uh, the stencil would normally be so that you can really see how this relates to tattooing. So I'm going to go ahead and put my line drawing here. Let's make that just a little bit bigger. All right. And uh, maybe I'll just make it slightly less opaque there so we can see what we're doing. Rename. We're going to call that stencil. Okay, I'm also going to make a layer for the skin color of the client so that you can see how the colors will look when you use these brushes. So I'll make a new layer here and we'll just call it skin tone. I'll choose from some palettes I've already made. I've got all of my Eternal Ink swatches that I love the most turned into um, Procreate palettes here. So you don't have the color names of course, but you can, uh, if, if you know your own palette, you can use our digital palettes and swatch maps uh, from Tattoo Smart to select your own palette. So I've got my skin color in place. I've got stencil on a different layer and I'm ready to start outlining. So I'll go to the, uh, the layer that I've already made here for the lines and let's go ahead and switch to black. As you can see here we've got all of the different sizes of liners, round shaders, all the various configurations that I could choose for my line work. As it turns out I already know that one of my favorite liner cartridges from Cheyenne is called the Nine Power and I think it's going to be the perfect kind of heavyweight line for this piece. I'm also going to use the Seven Liner for some of the thinner lines that I want to use. Um, we'll go ahead and select the Nine Power. I'm just going to start lining this thing out. Now the lines that you'll get here are exactly the size of the lines that you would get when tattooing with the nine power cartridge. And just like tattooing, if I make a wobbly line, it's gonna show up. There's not a lot of um, streamline settings on these particular brushes because I don't want to create something that's not authentic to actually tattooing. So if you can't do it on here, then you probably can't do it in a tattoo. And I think that this could be a really great teaching tool if you have an apprentice and you want to have them practice tattooing on the iPad rather than on the fake skins or on some people. One of the things I recommend is that you make it a rule that you can't you know, erase. Um, if you make it a rule that you can't erase then you have to live with whatever happens while you're working. I'm also not allowing myself to rotate anything. I'm trying to keep it pretty true to what it's like to actually be tattooing. So, you know, you can, you can do whatever you want when you're working in your studio. 
not allowing any undos and just having to live with whatever happens, just like in a real tattoo, kind of makes it fun. So I'm just going to keep lining this thing out. Okay, so I'm done with all of the fat lines that I want to do with the 9 power. So I'll switch over to the 7 liner here. And we'll go ahead and knock out the whiskers. You may notice that I'm not outlining the whiskers quite the same way that they were outlined in the original. There's a reason for it. I'm using a thinner line. And what I'm trying to do is keep the open space inside the whisker, like these spaces down here, I want them to be open. If you look at this whisker, it actually loses the open space about halfway through. And over time, as a tattoo ages and spreads, I think you find that that whisker isn't even open anymore. So what I do is I draw it in a way where it's a thinner line, but it's open farther into the whisker. And if I turn the stencil off, I think you'll be able to see a little better what I'm talking about. So that open line goes all the way to the end. Just because I was trying to hold myself to this strict, you know, no undos and, you know, no, no two finger taps here. Um, trying to stay authentic to actually tattooing. I, I you know, I'm going to have to live with whatever happened in that first outline. So. I'm going to spend a little bit of time going through with a three liner and um, I'm going to use the three liner 0.25. That is the smallest three liner that Cheyenne has and I prefer this even to the single liner when I want something really small. Um, but I'll actually go through there and just do a little bit of sculpting in the areas where my line work really needs a little bit of help. I'm not going to get too crazy with it because, again, a lot of this stuff will get hidden in the shading. And ultimately, I don't want to um, let it get so out of control that it starts to look like a different style of tattooing. I mean, a, a traditional tattoo is about single pass line work and about just making it happen as, as efficiently as you can. And the, uh, the character that happens in a tattoo is, is sometimes part of what makes it special. Um, and I also know that the more that I go around and mess with things, the, the more I can create new problems that I have to solve then. So we're not going to get too crazy with it, but I just wanted to show how you can approach working with these tools in the same way that you would actual tattooing. All right, now that I've spent a few minutes just correcting some of the, uh, the bigger flaws that I saw in my line work, we're going to go ahead and get into the black shading. I think I will use a 7 mag. So yeah, there's the 7 mag. Okay, so you'll notice when you're using these mags that if you hold your hand in the same angle that you would for tattooing and you just move forward in quick motions and lift, that you're going to get that same whip shade look with the mags that you would with a real tattoo machine. And if you really want to accentuate the whip shade look, you can actually go with the flats. Like here's the 5 flat and it has a little bit more space in between the needle marks. So you're gonna see that whip shade even more. Um, for this, I'm gonna go with the seven mag. Okay, so the seven mag, and we're just gonna go through and define sort of the edges of where we want our whips to be. And I like to work in just short little straightforward motions working in one direction only. So I'm, I'm not touching the screen, um, you know, back and forth. You can do that later. There's, there's other reasons you might want to do that. But for this part, I'm just trying to create these whips as smooth as I can and have a little bit of overlap from one stroke to the next so that there is... Um, a natural kind of smooth look to it. You can lighten your pressure a little bit with these and just like with a real tattoo needle if you don't press down as hard then the mark that it makes won't be 
as dark so you can kind of get away with a little bit of that. There's a lot of similarities to actually working with mags here. The way that I've set these brushes up is it's really um, unique. It's different than any of the uh, needle brushes that we've had out before. You're going to notice that it feels very authentic to actually tattooing and very authentic to actually working with a uh, cartridge machine as well. And um, you know, a lot of that has to do with the settings that I've put into the brushes, but also the fact that these brushes are made to match the needle cartridges made by Cheyenne. Okay, so once I've kind of defined where the whips are going to be, the sort of edges of the width out area, I can slow down and make tiny circles with my uh, 7 mag, just like a real tattoo, and kind of push in against that line and make some solid color. And I just have to take care to um, blend out any weird uh, missing areas that pop up. Not trying to over blend anything, we want to keep the um, traditional tattoo feel here because it just makes sense for this Flash Panther design. But I find this to be very very similar to the way that I tattoo and, and there's also um, times where I won't stress out too much about coloring up solid to the line with the, uh, the 7 mag here um, because you can actually mess up and go over the line. You can see a couple of places where my my mark is just just over the line here and um, there's nothing I can do about that so when it comes to getting really close to the line I might choose to you know, work with the needle more sideways by um, using that kind of motion there because the needle you know it, it's it's fatter in one direction you know you can go sideways or you can go forward and you're going to see a difference in the thickness of it. So I might choose to go sideways like that against the line and kind of arrange my hand just like with a real tattoo machine. And you can you can get some nice effects there. But I also might choose to use a round shader, which is really the perfect tool to get in there and hit those tiny little areas that you couldn't get quite solid against the line. I'm just over here filling it in, just doing the uh, the black shading. I'm trying to get through a little bit more of the open spaces that I can get with this 13 mag. I'm just trying to uh, save a little time here by using a larger grouping. But at a certain point I'm going to have to switch over to either the 7 mag or the uh, 9 round shader which I plan to use to kind of get in close to some of these edges. So that's that classic um, kind of shading style for the Panther, you know, where you've got a lot of solid black and then you've got the um, the black whipping out into skin tone at the edges right before the outline. Let's go ahead and try out the 9 shader. The 9 shader is going to have a little bit different of a uh, working property than the 9 liner for instance. Um, for one thing it's going to be you know a looser grouping so that you can use it with color pigments a little bit more. When you're working with a 9 shader work in small circles and you can um, really just kind of pinpoint exactly where you want to put the pigment. This is the right tool I think for uh, getting into smaller spaces where you know a mag might be a little bit risky. You could color outside the lines or color you know into a space that you didn't intend to. By working with the round shader it might not be as easy to get smooth blends but it is definitely a better tool for getting into tight spaces and coloring little solid areas. So when I designed these nine shaders for this uh, for this particular set of cartridge brushes, it's really careful to create a similar feel to the the real thing. So it really shows a little bit of texture if you lighten up and you know use a softer approach with it, you'll be able to see a little bit of texture through it. I think you'll find that this is a really versatile brush. You can see how easily it just colors everything in really solid. But then when I lighten up. I'm not pressing as hard now. I can get a little bit of a softer feel and I can smooth out a little bit of my work with the mag. So I mean, here's a perfect example of why I'm using this just to get into these tight little spaces right next to that whisker. So you'll see as I'm working around here through um, this tight little area the 9 shader is really the best tool for the job because I can't risk going out over um, any of the lines and, and making mistakes. So I need the effect of the 7 mag here 
just to kind of blend out the edges of this a little bit. I'm actually going to use a 5 mag here just to get that little whip shade sort of peppery look right at the edge of that blend that I did earlier with the um, 9 round shader. So that's really all I'm doing there. I actually use 5 mags a lot. Because it's a small grouping, it's a little bit harder to get smooth blends, but you can get these really precise highlight areas left that would be hard to do with a mag that you have to turn in all different directions to get into a space. One of the nice things about having uh, this brush set here, of course, is that you can try out a bunch of cartridges that you may never have wanted to spend the money to buy a box of. And you can get a feel for what they might add to your, um, to your toolkit. So maybe you'll find that you start using a lot of the brushes just to solve certain issues like the reason I'm using this 5 mag right now and then you end up deciding that you should uh, actually buy a box of the real thing and try them out. I mean there's so many different cartridges that Cheyenne makes and a lot of them just might not be the right thing for you. Um, there's a lot of subtle variations between the needles. Um, you'll find that some appear to be almost the exact same size, but they have a little bit different feel in the skin. And whenever possible, I've tried to capture that here in these brushes. You know, for instance, you might have noticed that the 13 liner from Cheyenne is actually a smaller line than the 11 liner. And I was, I was shocked when I discovered that. But the reason that it is, is because the 11 liner is made with a larger diameter needle than the 13 liner is. So when you put 11 fat needles together in a grouping, you get a bigger line than when you put 13 small needles together in a grouping. And if you'd never studied the documentation that Cheyenne has on their website and, and seen what the actual sizes of the needles are in each grouping, then you probably never notice that the 13 liner is a smaller line. And if you were looking for a fat line like I always was, the first one I went for was the 13 line. And I didn't even buy a box of the 11s because I thought, I'm just looking for the fattest needle that they have. Until I started working with these needle brushes, I didn't realize that the 11 liner was actually a thicker line. Really what it comes down to is just understanding the tools that you're working with in real life in a digital way. Um, which means that you have you know, access to try things out, you have access to um, experiment and you know, get a little bit creative with your process before you do it on human skin. And I always recommend doing full value studies before you tattoo. Um, when I was in my first five years of tattooing, I think that it was a crucial part of what helped me grow as an artist to, to not just work out the line drawing, but to also figure out where all the, uh, the values were gonna go. I mean, I think about value before I think about color. Um, you know, where's the black going to go, which uh, areas are going to need to be light so I have good contrast. I make all those decisions before I ever think about color. And um, using a, an iPad just makes all that so much easier and faster because I used to have to do it with colored pencils or, you know, sometimes watercolor paints. Um, and trying to bust all that out and, and still be on time for your appointment is um, a challenge sometimes. So... I find that a lot of tattooers have switched over to using the iPad just to prepare not only their stencil but also to prepare a quick color study or value study of what they're going to do in the piece. This kind of tool set here is perfect for that because it's just a direct one-to-one -one relationship between the tools of tattooing. You'll see as I get into the colors here that I'm actually using Eternal Ink Colors. Another product that we've had on Tattoo Smart since the beginning is the digital palettes. They're like color swatches. So I went through and sampled the exact colors of the tattoo ink and created these files basically that load into some of the other programs like Clip Studio or Photoshop. Um, they don't load into Procreate in the same way. So what you actually have to do if you want to use one is you can open up the image that comes with it we call it a swatch map, and this is the one for Eternal Ink. And what I did was, to make my palettes, you'll see in a moment, 
and grabbed the color and then I have that color here and so I could just add this color into the palette so here's a blank space and th this is a dark blue color let's get one you can see a little better so blue ribbon here and I've got that color blue ribbon there and I can just add it to a palette and save it there um, so I've got three palettes here that are full of eternal link colors that I will use um, in my work so I'm going to delete that one it doesn't belong there but just get jumping back over Jumping back to the nine shader, just to finish up the last of these small little areas here. All right, I think that about does it for the black shading. Pretty happy with everything that we got done here. It's time to add some color. Got another layer that I've already set up here for the color, so we'll switch to that. And I'm going to go with this color from my Eternal Ink palette. This one here, this one's called Old Orchid. Old Orchid is a color that, it's a nice dark red. It's looking almost like black here, but it's a nice color to blend in between the, uh, the black and some true red, like lipstick red, or I'm not sure which red I'm going to choose, but Old Orchid is my kind of go-to to get in between in a blend from black to red. I'll put a little bit of that Old Orchid in the uh, ear here as well because we're going to blend out into a red and a pink. All right. Okay, so for the red, we're going to go with light red. I'll stick with the nine shader for a moment. So one thing you'll notice with using these... Um, brushes is when you use light colors on top of darker colors the light colors will not cover up the darker colors and that's because of a setting that I put into the brushes themselves and I'll, I'll prove it to you right now if I use this pink here and try to color over so I can color pink right here where I haven't colored yet but as soon as I get onto this red I've already done I can't affect it and um, this is a setting that I put in the actual brush itself. Let's get back to that red. And the 5 mag. See, so yeah, we don't want all that red to be totally solid. We want to blend out into the skin there so we can have the right look. So I'm just going to do a little bit of 5 mag right there. And then switch back to the 9 shader. Let's go ahead and jump over to 7 mag. Put some red in this ear. I'm switching over to a lighter kind of warm pink color called um, Tangerine. This is another eternal color that I use a lot. Just kind of blending out of that red with it. I'll use a little bit of it there. And it's going to be the perfect color I think for these little like spaces around the eyes that we left. They're like, I guess they're sort of like enlarged tear ducts. Um, but it's nice when the Panther has so much black in it so it's nice to find ways to kind of get away from the black sometimes and, and do something uh, a little brighter. Definitely want to use the nine shader to put this tangerine color in here so we don't go outside the lines or make a mess. We also want to do it quickly. This is a color that looks really really bright in the skin. Um, Anytime I want red to feel bright, I will go with this color, tangerine. And it helps if you have a darker red in there as well. I'm not saying just use tangerine, but if you have a darker red, like um, light red, dark red, 
Um, I think we used uh, Old Orchid, you know, kind of setting up a blend, starting with dark, medium, and the lightest being the tangerine. It's a really good look. I think we might go back to a little bit of black shading in the nose. We'll see how that looks. Put it in with the uh, 5 mag. Yeah, it works pretty good. As long as I don't color it in too solid because we don't want to have this whole area get too dark. I think it's good when the, the sort of muzzle area of the panther has less black in it. Just a lot more skin or maybe maybe there's some room for some color. Something to kind of draw some attention to that muzzle and make it a little bit more interesting. All right, let's see. Go back to my color layer. I'm going to do a nice... Uh, green right there around the pupils. Use the nine shader for that. Now I'll switch to a lighter green and then finally switch to yellow. For the lips I was thinking of a sort of grayish purple color. So yeah the, uh, the round shader works really good for putting that purple in those small spaces. Then of course I'm going to want to use the 5 mag to kind of whip it out a little bit. So yeah, I'll use the 5 mag and just kind of whip it out. Still leaving some skin, not trying to color it in all the way. The lip is supposed to look a little bit lighter than the, um, the areas around it. Yeah, I like that. I'm also going to try a little bit of purple in the teeth themselves to kind of act as that like shadow on the tooth without having to put any black in there. That's cool. Uh, let's see what else. I wonder how that will look in the muzzle. So it's really nice to be able to try things out and um, make my experiments on the iPad rather than on someone's skin. This is certainly the type of thing that I like to test before it actually happens to a person. Um, but I think that I would be pretty comfortable using this color here. Glad I tried it. Yeah. Alright. I think for the final uh, addition to this we're going to just use the, uh, the 9 shader and put some white highlights in. White highlights aren't always um, acceptable in some circles for a traditional tattoo. But I think if they're used in a very minimalist way, it can be totally fine. Um, for this, I'm planning to use white in just the whiskers, the centers of the eyes, and the teeth. And, you know, of course it might not be as traditional, but there were other things about this design that were less traditional too, so we'll call it a little bit more neo-traditional maybe. One thing that is for sure is that these colors are looking a little bit fake on top of this skin. So I have a, a method that I can use to make the colors, including the white and the rest of them, sit on top of this um, skin color a little bit more authentically to how a healed tattoo would look. Um, so as soon as I'm done with this white here, I'm going to show you how you can use um, a few layer modes to change how the, um, the pigments interact with the skin. And unfortunately that white is covering up that purple because I think I've got my layer in the wrong place. So I'm going to move it underneath. Yeah, that fixed it. Okay. So I think that's a pretty good look, just having a little bit of uh, purple and then filling the tooth with solid white. But like I said, that's a little bit fake, you know. Um, I don't care how nice your, uh, your skin is for white. It's not going to look that great, especially in a healed tattoo after it's settled in. So we're going to do a quick little edit to the layer mode to make that more authentic. So I've already set this document up with different settings. Um, 
So here in the fresh tattoo area that I've been working, I've got lines, black, color, and white, and they all say fresh after them. So this is your standard um, layer setting, just normal layer setting, which you can change by tapping in here and choosing from all of these different modes. So in my healed tattoo section here that I just expanded, I've got the settings done a little bit differently, and I'll show you what that does. Mainly it's going to be something that we would do to the color and to the white. For the color, we're just going to tap and copy. And this is going to copy all of the color that's in that layer. And then we're going to go down to our layer called Color Healed here that has some different settings. And we'll head over to this wrench icon. And there we have Paste. So I'll go ahead and um, make the color invisible in the fresh tattoo layer and you can see as I toggle it on and off you can see what changes well first of all that white needs to needs to switch over to so let's just look at color alone I've made the white go away so this is the um, original color layer set to normal and this is the same color layer but with the um, layer mode set to darken I'm sorry it should be darker color Right. which one looks better? Darken. So this is the so this is the color layer set to replicate more the way that color would actually look healed into the skin. And I think that's really interesting because depending on what skin tone you select to represent your client's skin color, you can actually really quickly um, understand how bright the colors will actually be in their skin. It's a really good, I mean, it's not perfect, obviously. Um, there, there's no method that I know of to perfectly replicate how tattoos age in skin, but this is a great start because you're gonna be viewing the color in a different way. It's not gonna be sitting on top of the skin like paint on skin. It's gonna be sitting underneath um, layers of skin with the skin pigmentation affecting the colors. So this layer mode that I've got everything set to here does a pretty good job of, of doing that. And um, with the white layer that we saw was way too bright, we're also going to copy that. And then come down here and paste into this other layer. And there it is, you can see the difference. This was the old white, and this is the new white. And it's this layer is set to soft light. So set to normal, it looks like that. Set to soft light, it looks way more like the way that white looks after it's settled in and healed. So I'm providing a blank file with all of these layer settings already in them so that you can use them um, to go through the same process that I went through here. I'm also providing my custom palette of all the colors that I love from Eternal Ink. And, um, you know, so you can follow along. And if, you know, if you have some of the uh, Tattoo Smart brush sets like Aaron Francione's Angry Animal set, you can use that as well to, um, to just practice. And you can even follow along and, and do this exact same panther head that I did if you have Aaron's set. I also feel like this is going to be a really useful tool for teaching your apprentices the methods of tattooing from how to outline and, and how quick your hand should be moving while you're working to which tools are going to be the right um, tools for specific situations um, with all of these different options from you know five mags all the way to 27 mags with, with the soft edge mags that have a, uh, a different feel in the skin, you're gonna be able to see the difference with those here in this set. Um, we have some of the uh, more obscure needle groupings that you may never have even tried, like the five flats here that are gonna give you a nice kind of peppery whip shade to the um, medium taper liners that have just a slightly different feel in the skin. Um, it's all here. You're gonna be able to fully explore the Cheyenne cartridge line and use these tools to just help yourself become a more efficient tattooer and to prepare 
even better for the actual tattoos that you're going to be doing. I'm Russ Abbott, and this is the Cheyenne Cartridge Needle Brush Set from Tattoo Smart for the iPad.